Thanks. So I brought up this box because everybody else seemed to have one and explain <laughs> a little bit of that. So hi, I'm Michael. Uh, we are Team Space Face, and we built a system that monitors the physical and mental health for crews on long haul voyages and missions. And since we haven't yet figured out how to cryogenically sleep people, these crews are faced with some of the toughest travel conditions imaginable. They're cramped up for months, if not years, breathing in recycled air, circulating around a shiny metal tube that's millimeters thin and pressurized against a vacuum of the vacuum is space. Thing. It's big, right? And so as I heard with the cosmos, it becomes increasingly stressful for not only the crew, but the support teams back at home. So before anybody goes postal and opens an airlock, killing everybody inside of it, or jelly just becomes a liability, uh, advanced warning would be helpful. So what we've done is using periodic biometric readings, voice and uh, face recognition technology, we can passively monitor crew members as they go about their business. We then apply machine learning to the samples to predict when crew members are having a rough go of it, and we can subtly recommend recreational activities and schedule changes to help bring the crew members back to parity. So for this hackathon, we were able to build a system that monitors one crew member, in this case me. And if you're wondering why I've been looking, not looking up for my screen too often, it's because this laptop right here has been recording my face and voice and sending to space face every few seconds, which you can see right there. So with the voice data, Space Face uses Ibanez Blue Mix to confirm my speech to text and analyze the sentiment of my words. It measures the tone of my voice to further get data on my general emotional state, which I think right now is best classified as frenetic. When the image is a video, we use Microsoft's Cognitive API to detect any emotional score from my face. And then, using some environmental data from NASA to provide some context around these scores, because some people, like our previous pre presenter, like it when it was sunny. I don't. I like it when it was rainy. That was weird like that. We can determine whether or not this context is relevant to the trending state of my general uh, emotional level. So if the prediction indicates some in a dire situation, we'll send an on-call psychiatrist a text message or phone call uh, to review the data uh, if it seems to be trending the wrong way over time. And of course, we use Twilio for that. And I think the good news is I'm still saying it according to this data. <laughs> All right, so do we have the remember dash set up? Um, this is what we got. Um, okay, well, we, we had it earlier, I promise. Um, we had a stream where we can show the status of every crew member and suggest recreational activities. I think for me, uh, it's recommended that I eat some chocolate and play some video games, which both recreational activities I enjoy. So a bit more on passive data collection. The thing is, actively asking people about how they're doing doesn't necessarily yield accurate results. And even well-trained astronauts, or any human for that matter, who intimately understands the dangers and perils of space travel, is often off to lie, uh, especially in situations that are unfamiliar or new, like, you know, long-haul deep space travel. It's nearly impossible to wear a brave uh, face every single second, so a system that periodically, frequently, and passively collects behavioral information will notice issues that a direct site evaluation might otherwise miss. And then, using these recre uh, recreation recommendations based on the data we've collected, space space can handle these issues before they become real mission critical problems. On the tech stack side, we use uh, a service oriented architecture using Node.js, Flask, Angular, Redis, all in Azure to process images, video, and audio using Microsoft's Cognitive API and IBM's Bluemix service. And because our core endpoints allow for all sorts of rich media and other sorts of data streams, in the future we can incorporate movement data from Microsoft Band or the uh, Fitbit or any sort of motion tracking uh, device. And that way we can take all of the information from a visual, oral, and contextual perspective to bring about some machine learning to accurately predict the behavioral and diagnostical information of each crew member on board. So while Space Space was, space space, excuse me, was built with travel space in mind, space travel in mind, it can also be applied to other hazardous long-term trips and missions, such as deep blue uh, ocean explorations and Arctic explorations. So next time you find yourself on a long-haul trip through the cosmos, you can be sure that your crew can face space with grace using space space. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, here. Also, that was crazy time for four minutes. <laughs> um, I was just curious, who the data is going to right now, like for the psychiatric analysis? Do you have, like, do you already have that set up, or? Uh, yeah, to a certain extent, we've got um, the images coming over here, the voice coming through here, all the way to Microsoft's uh, behavioral API, which gives us a feedback. And using a special proprietary algorithm, we scrubbed over a couple of times. We got this nice graph right here. So when we looked at some better, what's the um, uh, DSM is it the yeah whatever that is we use some of the basic benchmarks right there to generate a recommendation which populates below which obviously are fluid in this case but would be real in an actual application. Okay. Thank you guys.
Uh, may I suggest an integration with Issy? <laughs> In fact, an inspiration for that, yes. <laughs> Perfect pair. <laughs> Any more questions? No? Thank you.